<laughs> All right, y'all. So we're uh, back. <laughs> I, I guess I'm not fired. I'm on probation. Yeah, I'm probation. Not fired. <laughs> Actually, talk to me. What do you think about what happened last week? <laughs> no, that's why Chris did not know. Chris is aware that we're filming with other people, but he did not know that we're gonna post. Cause I didn't even know Chris was going to Boston. First of all, let's talk about you going to Boston and not. I told uh, you that. We're questioning it at I, work. I told you, you that. Know, when? I was like, Yo, boss. Remember we were having. Uh, we were ha- we were having. What was it? We we're hanging out. You, me, and Eddie. You told me we were going to Cali. I was like, Oh yeah, we're going to Boston the week after. Shit, you did tell me that. And I'm, then you said, Oh, you said, Oh, don't worry. Either way, we're gonna manage to do it. I'm like, right, cool. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. You, I'm sorry. My bad, bro. Keep, just yeah, accept, I'm going to extend my I'm hand for you. I'm sorry, big dog. <laughs> All right, y'all. So uh, we back uh, back again with my big dog over here. Um, the original. I'm down, if you want to call it like that. Um, we did Down the Block, which is going to be what we want to do Yo, on Thursdays. introduce that now because I was yes. mad confused. So I'm going to introduce <laughs> it now. You're right. So the last podcast we did, Down the Block, which was me, Giselle, and Ahmed, we, you know, again, just to give more of uh, a different perspective on like different topics that we could hit, mm-hmm. you know, with men, essentially, you get me? So we wanted to create something where we could either put girls on game, uh, talk to guys about mm. stuff, or or everything in between, you know what I mean? Um, on, a, on a different note, you know what I mean? And so with Chris, and what we're going to do with, on Wednesday is going to continue with us, for sure, you know, on Wednesdays. And we're going to talk to you about more sophisticated <laughs> answers. We're going to give you more sophisticated answers with my dumb ass, so here still <laughs> talking, for sure. You know, so Chris is still going to have the you're leash dumb, on me, bro, pulling me dumb. back a little bit. <laughs> But, um, you know... Then you get the Raider X concert. The Raider, exactly. Where, you know, nobody's going to pull me back and be like, nah, bro, you kind of sound <laughs> stupid right now. You know, them niggas going to let me do whatever the fuck I want to say. So, um, <laughs> You're dumb, bro. But, you know, yeah, we just want to give y'all some more content. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Definitely sure. trying to step up uh, production and, you know, everything that yeah. we're doing. So, you know, thank you guys for having us today. Um, what were we talking about right now? I don't know. You wanted to ask something. I did, man. Okay, so first off, how was Boston? Let's talk there. Uh, it was cool. Um... Yo, these people respect rules, man. Really? Talk yo, to me. yo, I and I kid you not, I cannot think of I ever seeing a person without their mask. Mm. Every place at nine thirty mm-hmm. is a ghost town. Nine thirty. We were we were staying in downtown, right? So it was like one of the few, t- the few times I've, I've been like in downtown, downtown. Obviously, it's the first time I go to Boston. Right. But it's been downtown where like you see all the hecticness, you know, like so for a moment it felt like New York, and then nine hit and there was nobody outside besides like maybe a few homeless people. Like, it was crazy, bro. Damn. A lot of the, the places were closed. 9.30, though? You know, oh. so so it was weird because you know how people keep saying, like, oh, COVID, we lost our jobs, we lost our this, we lost our that. Yeah. In Miami, we don't really notice that because most places that we hang are still open. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There was a lot of, like, closed down for good places. There was a lot of places. Like out of uh, business. Yeah, boarded oh. up because of the, the, the elections. The, yeah, the, the riots uh, br- and like, stuff. Like, yeah. bro, like, we were, we were staying by some place, right? So they had, like, all the bougie stores by there. Yeah. All of them boarded up. So all of that was close, and even though it was a long weekend, it was yeah. better as weekend, whatever. Yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah, they said so, nope. So it was it was definitely like a like a beautiful city, but it was yeah. strange because it was like the first time I saw like the the real effects of, of COVID and the election. Were there any people walking though during the daytime? Like a no, lot no, of people, no, no, it was a lot. Very of few. Like for example, uh, Saturday, which we had a beautiful day, it was yeah. like fifty degrees, sunny. Wow. Uh, there was a lot of people out, you know, walking through the park, hanging out. Yeah, yeah. But even like even like Blue Bottle, which is my favorite coffee shop. Mm-hmm. You can only order to take, like you know, oh, most of those. Sit down. Yeah, most of them had adjusted to that kind of sort. Yeah. So it was weird, like to find a place that actually let you sit. Another thing is, everywhere you went, food-wise, they w- or even the museums, they would take down your name and your phone number for contact tracing. What so, you, that, what do so you mean? like, let's say they find out somebody was infected, they want to be able to reach out to all these people oh, that hey, damn. somebody in this place. I, I was unheard of here, bro. That's definitely unheard of here. That's actually very considerate, yeah. as a matter of fact. Yeah, so they would, everywhere you went, they, so I would say 76, they'd be like, you're from Miami, and they would like put their mask up even more. <laughs> oh, it's not, they're like, yeah, these Florida <laughs> niggas don't give a shit about that. So they had all kinds of things, but it was a nice city. Yeah. It, was, it was beautiful. Dope, dope. You, you, what'd you do that was out of, let, let's, let's, go, let's go this route, actually. Let's, go start, let's start this early. What was your on that moment in Boston that you would say you did something different or something that you experienced mm. that you want to share? What did I do that was different? Oh, I had a lot of seafood. Surprise! Seafood. Obviously, I'm in Boston. I had to eat seafood. Uh, Boston's we, known for seafood. Yeah, I bro. didn't even know that. Like the the clam chowder, you know, like that's like really? the, the that whole Massachusetts, gross. bro. Clam chowder? What's a clam? Like really, like a clam? Yo, I had oysters that tasted just like the ocean. Like I felt like I was eating the Pacific Ocean. Like uh, salty, yeah, like really, like, like the real salt. Hmm. But I had clam chowder was amazing. I had uh, 
Oh, you, I you went didn't to, have that before? Never had no, I've had it before, but it was the really best one. Fire. But I had some lobster rolls that were amazing. But I think that my down was thing was going to Salem. Um, I don't do witches. I don't do none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are very clear about those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Salem, obviously. The uh, dark I, culture. Yeah. Um, we went to this place where they were reenacting a, uh, a case, right, where the women were declared witches and they would be burned or hung or whatever. Yeah. Um, before, we're in the waiting room, and all I hear is a bunch of screaming. And I, the, like, literally, this is what threw me off, right? The first thing is I hear a bunch of screaming. And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> and I scream that loud as hell. And next thing I know is I, I hear laughing. All I notice is a bunch of girls, Sammy and I. That's it. <laughs> really? Nobody else was in that mug. Instead of like, it was just straight girls. I was like, yo, we're going to set up. We're going to be the ones. <laughs> 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 They're going to be sacrificed so, yeah, soon. Bro. So it was like, it was, it was cool. Uh, it was historic. It was beautiful. But that yeah. was, I think it was it. It was like. Going to a place that I don't feel mad comfortable. I feel like everybody there look goth. Everybody there look weird. Uh, is there people living there? Yeah. Like yeah, it's a city. Really? But so it's not like a whole museum. No, no, it's a would. bunch of museums, but it was like a it was like a city. But it had like a, I guess just because my own mind, it felt like it had an eerie feeling to it. So for those of you that may not know, right, Salem is known for witches, witches. right? And the where witch they trials the, and whatever, and yeah. all like, they burned them and yeah. they did. Well, is Salem known though because they had the most witches like ever in the United no, States? because of the Salem witch trials, like those specific things, the witch trials there became the what's, thing. What's so what, you mean like they had a lot of witches they had so they had a lot of trials so, so basically any any woman who was basically single and old or oh. or whatever or you know her daughter would rebel bro everything at that point became oh they're possessed by the devil they're possessed by the devil they're possessed by the devil that was like the way out so is is that like some crazy religious thing yeah, that was yeah, going yeah. on though? That's I, what no, was? no, I, I think in part obviously it was religion in part it was kind of like like, yo, this person's trying me, that person's trying me, they're witches. They must be witches. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so people would police each other and they would report on each other. Mm. Right? Uh, so but people would take it seriously yeah. whenever they reported. No, no, right? Of course. So it how would they prove it, that they were witches? Was like, it was like or a, they didn't care though. It was like it was like the dumbest things, like, oh, if she couldn't say the Lord's Prayer, you know, our father who are in heaven, hallowed be that. if she couldn't say it completely, she would must have to be a witch. And the and though and she'll go on trial and yeah. she'll most likely die. Yeah. So has there been any witches on trial that didn't die? Yeah, there was a few, like, there was a st one of the stories or they were telling witches. us. Yeah, there was a story that they were telling us where uh, one of the ladies, they didn't kill her at that point because she was pregnant. They were going to wait for the baby to come out. So once mm. the baby's coming out two days later, then they finally ended this whole nonsense of witch trials. And so she, sp she saved herself because she was pregnant, basically. Oh. There was obviously other people who got saved. Yeah. But, yeah, it was like the whole, the whole idea of paranoia. Like You know, that, that's in, it's interesting that you say that now because... You know, I, I was watching your stories and stuff, right? And I'm like, okay, so, like, they're at this, like, witch thing, whatever, right? And I, I kind of thought nothing of it, right? But it's funny because right now, like, Giselle's like, yo, so what are you guys talking about? And now you say this, right? Like, the reason I say religion or, like, this was a crazy religion thing, though. So, in Salem, it was based on Christianity. That, that's yeah, what their yeah. whole thing was, right? Mm -hmm. So, anything that, not necessarily that went against it, they but, would, like, try to kill you. Yeah. But it was a very, very mm -hmm. big yeah, deal, yeah, right? Yeah. All right, so, like, I guess let's transition now, right, to Christianity how how long ago since Salem at uh, the church witch trials how long ago was that like it was like 1700s I think oh so it was very yeah, very yeah. old okay so transition that right so obviously Christianity is still in play right and we have an entire different mm -hmm. like look of what that even looks yeah. like right it's not necessarily priests no yeah. more right or stuff like that right? it's like pastors and young pastors without mm -hmm. all this stuff right so I'm sure you know what I'm getting yeah. to now which is gonna be you know what happened maybe a week or two ago right so Hillsong and again I'm sorry guys if y'all felt like I just dropped this bar right now but it's really what I wanted to ask I do want to know about your I'm that moment by the way I ain't trying to dog y'all like that right no, that's cool yeah but I did want to ask you though what are your views though on what happened with Carl Lentz right you know the whole Hillsong yeah, yeah. situation what do you think um, I'm not gonna comment on and him as a person or his family because I look up to them. I would not right, disrespect right. them. Yes. Um, I've always told you. I think he's one of those dudes. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, I, I think that that it's a tough position to be put in for him mm -hmm. and for the church. Uh, my heart goes up to him for him just going into Instagram and and just publicly saying what the deal was. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I found out that he had gotten fired before I found out why he had gotten fired. Right. And mm. even if his Hillsong was very respectful in the way they said it, said it was a moral failure. Yeah. A and this is the thing, right? Like, oh, uh, I'm going to address cancel culture and I'm going to address this at the same time, right? Yeah. Um, we got to be careful because he does deserve to be fired, even though that breaks my heart. Mm. Right? Because he's a moral leader, mm -hmm. right? And so if he's not living up to that level, I'm not saying he has to be perfect, right? Yeah. But he's a moral leader. People are going to look to him. All right, and his the, the sad thing is that you equate him, you equate him 
to represent all of Hillsong. Yes. Which is not fair, but it's true. That's how yes. it happens, right? Yeah. And he's it, a face, you would say. Right? And he represents a lot of Christianity. Like, yeah. You know, this idea of the new cool or, or pastors. In the, in the culture, yeah, right? The Within new, the culture. Yeah, because yeah. think about it. He 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 is even in all the polls you see Justin Bieber's pastor. They were saying Carl Lenz. Yeah, yeah. Justin Bieber's or like pastor. Mentor. Or, or KD's whatever or Tyson Chandler, the one who baptized and you know, and they were using yeah. all these labels. So he represents a lot more than just Carl Lenz, sadly, yeah. because of the spotlight he's in. Yeah. And so Hillsong has to fire him because they have to be clear that, you know, we as Christians ha are subjected, whether we like it or not, to a higher moral standard. Hmm. Yeah. Right. That's that's been my whole complaint about, you know, when people yeah, say yeah. Uh, President Trump is a Christian. I'm like, no, no, Christians have to be held to. A, we have to because the Bible calls us to live in a different way yeah. than everybody else. Right now. Yeah. Cancellation. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Repeat that statement one more time. You're saying Christians have to be held to a higher moral standard than the rest of the world, right? Yep. Why? Like be for, for the people that don't know or like because like literally why? the word Christian, right, means mm -hmm. follower of Christ. Yeah. And so the whole thing, the whole premise of this thing is that we want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not limit himself to the law of the time. You know, you would always hear him if you read the Bible, right? You hear him quote things like, oh, it, is, it has been said, and he's quoting the, the law, right? Yeah. The, the standard of moral law. Mm -hmm. He's like, it has been said, you know, an eye for an eye. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. tell you, if somebody slaps your left cheek, give him your right too. Right. That's, he's not, he's making things way harder. Yeah, it's T for time. Yeah, he's like, he's like, you know, the, the, the law is, you hit me, I hit you. Yeah. But now, what I'm telling you is, you hit me here, match it up with this one. <laughs> mm. So he's raising the moral standard, right? That, mm -hmm. That's the, the whole thing of, of how we're supposed to live our lives, right? Yeah. Like reflecting him. Oh, explain that in a more practical way, though. Oh, yeah. Like, like the, so, the cheek thing. Okay, so the cheek thing is, uh, we all know eye for an eye. That doesn't require, right, uh, yeah. an explanation. Yeah. But this this idea that we tolerate the attacks even upon ourselves. Like, we, we, we give that space for grace. We, we forgive. We don't, we don't retaliate. We don't seek revenge, mm -hmm. right? We forgive. Yeah. And it's frustrating and, it, and it's tiresome, but that's what is required or requested of us. But why? Like, what, what does that do for us, us forgiving and us not retaliating? Because, like? and that's the thing. The thing is, we're supposed to reflect Jesus. Gotcha. Okay. I, I, I get I, it. I get it. Like, like, sometimes that, that, the thing people fail. And, and, and by the way, I, I'm, I'm I, with I you. I'm just, just you know, get our exactly, story, yeah. exactly. So, and I like that you challenge me to, to be more broad, right? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, Christianity is is hard. I think the people who say just things like, oh, love your neighbor and, and love God, that's the truth. Yeah. But sometimes you're like, okay, but what does that mean for a practical person, right? Right. Like, for example, love your neighbor right now means wear a mask. Oh, good point. It, it doesn't mean I necessarily believe in COVID or don't believe in COVID, don't believe that you just can heal. Or doesn't. It just means that I got to be considerate of the people around me. Well, but but that would, I mean, and again, your examples your examples correct. Um I, continue. I'm sorry. I don't even cut you off. No. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, no, go ahead. Tell me where you're going. Okay. I, I was gonna say. I was gonna say to, to that degree. I guess it will come down to what you also believe in, though, right? Like, imagine, like for example, if you don't believe that COVID really is out here, like you don't believe mm -hmm. that um, it's X, X, Y, Z, like wh whatever it is, right? Loving your neighbor means, right? Like in this mm -hmm. case, we're talking about COVID. If you don't believe in that, you don't have that like within you, then you don't really feel like you're not loving your neighbor. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm but I, and that's true. You may not feel that way. Yeah. Uh, but that's but it what could is, be that. But way. It, it is that way, and I'm gonna tell you why it is that way. Because even if I don't feel that way, I don't want to put anybody at risk just for their sake. Even mm -hmm. though I feel like, oh, I'm not gonna get sick. I'm not gonna transfer sickness. Yeah. But just for any little possibility, yeah. I'll wear this stupid mask. Yeah. And and you're you're real big also on the feeling part, right? Yeah. Like you're also big on like, yo, I don't go off my feelings. Me I go off of what's yeah, supposed yeah. to be what's or what's, to, what's exactly. right, what you believe. Because in. we were having a discussion about COVID a couple months ago that yeah. that realistically, you know, I, I got sick, for example. For, I was chilling. For me, it was like a two-week vacation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I, it was whatever, yeah. It was yeah. like, yeah. I, technically, I was positive, but it was like chilling. You yeah, know what right, I mean? right. But it would be inconsiderate of me because I feel fine to go out that's not loving my neighbor. Of course. Right? Yeah. And even being after, irresponsible. Yeah, and even for after, sure. I, mean, I mean, I got tested a bunch of times to make sure that, that my negative was a negative, you know? Yeah. And that I wasn't like false negative, false positive, or whatever. Yeah. And so I was, because my, my care doesn't go just for me, it goes for my neighbor. And gotcha. so. Even if I say, or people were to say, oh, but you, you already got it, you might not get sick again, mm -hmm. I'm still gonna wear my mask yeah. because I don't wanna ever put somebody else at risk. Yeah. And so that's the mindset, right? And so when we talk about like, like for example, Carl Lentz, he he should get fired, right? Because it is expected of him, as especially a lead pastor, yeah, right. But 
but he shouldn't get canceled. And, and this is what I mean, right? People are going to say, oh, but if he's a Christian, then blah, 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 yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I'm tired of, of cancel culture. I, I think cancel culture is the dumbest thing there is in life, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't just mean this as a Christian person. I mean this as a commonsensical person. Yeah. Because it does not understand growth. Yeah. Like... Yeah, it, t- it takes it off all together. Uh, it's it, like, it's it, like, it doesn't yeah. put it all in the scale and, and say like, okay, is this where you come this far? No, no, no. You did yeah. this one mistake and this one mistake way outweighs everything else. It's very interesting talking about cancel culture, right? Just, just now a thought came to my head and I feel like, you know, with cancel culture, I feel like it might be the people at the bottom trying to like push that narrative, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Or, because I also understand that, you know, the media plays a big role mm-hmm. in it. You get me? So the media's going to push whatever's popping, what everybody's talking yeah. about. They want to push and they want to get on it first. And you get me? Like, they don't care if it's true. They yeah. don't care what it is. They just want to be on it yeah. first. You get me? Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. Like, yo, did you hear what happened on, oh, d- 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 go, go to the shade room right now. Go to the shade room right now. You're going to see mm-hmm. what happened. You get me? Like, like so people want to get to it first. Yeah. So I, I completely agree. Um, the thing about cancel culture, though, that's interesting that the fact that it's still going on makes me wonder who is in control or, like, who's deeming these things? Is it really successful people looking at it? Or, like, people that, like, because, remember, real successful people, I feel like, you know, you will look at yourself and, like, try to define what growth mm-hmm. has been for you. You get me? And try to define, like, how far yeah. you've come. You know what I'm saying? Like, look back and stuff. So, you will understand, like, yo, somebody's fuck up shouldn't be with them forever. Yeah. We don't even deal with jail, but we kind of do, in a way. You get me? No, I think the problem with cancel culture is that it's a mob rule. Like, yeah. it's a mob rule, and yeah. everybody is against that person until they finally come for you. Yep. Man, that's look, true. Look, like all right. the other shoe. Like this is this is the problem, right? It's like um somebody was telling me this week, it's like, oh you know, I, I don't I don't think we should always be and it's a girl. A girl was telling me, I don't think we should always believe her. And I'm like, oh, be careful, you're going against me too. And she's like, no, no, because I specifically heard a case, da 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 mm-hmm. and she experienced firsthand how a woman's testimony a false be, testimony yeah. against a man, right? Like almost ruined his life. Yeah. I mean, right. that's still going on today. And that's still going today. Yeah. But my point is, this was a big thing. Like me too. Believe her. Believe her. Believe her. Yeah, until, yeah, yeah. until you realize, maybe believe her most of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or, or like whatever else you yeah. can think of. You know, Kevin Hart uh, and his old deal. With and, uh, his cheating and yeah, yeah. Or Kevin Hart with, with his old tweet. Gay, with yeah, the, the gay, gay thing, slur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, all these things. It's like, that's cool. I understand that they made a mistake and they should own up to it. Yeah. Bro, people brought a Jimmy Fallon thing from like 20 years ago. Yeah, the like, blackface. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, the Drake thing from the blackface the with blackface Drake, Drake yeah. Pusha T. Oh, let me tell you like, something. Pusha T dug deep yeah, for that picture, yeah. bro. Dug deeper, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And so the thing is, this person just has to push that picture forward yeah. and let the mob do the rest. Cancel this person, Actually, cancel I, this person, cancel this person. I'm sorry to say it, but that just came to my mind. Nobody tried to cancel Drake though, did they? That, there was no, no like cancel Drake no, you campaign. Know, you, know, you know what? You know why they didn't try to cancel Drake at that point? Because we were all waiting for the clap back. That's kind of true. Yeah, everybody was that, like, oh, that's what a is good he gonna fucking say? point. What is he going to say? Yo, what is he gonna the, say? The whole moral thing that everybody's on was nobody was even giving a fuck no, about that. No, I was like, nah, yeah, bro, don't mess with Drake right now because he got something cooking. Yeah, he's going to say. Cause, and then everybody was hearing about like, oh, no, they're telling him to cool off. And people, no, 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 no. You better say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because like, you better say something before he comes for you. We just want more drama. But like, I saw this tweet. Unfortunately. This tweet. Um, when this girl's like, good morning to all the he, the she, the blah, blah, blah. And she covered, I don't know how many people in the, the spectrum. The whole spectrum, yeah, basically. But somebody still tweeted, how dare you forget about, and I forgot what they said, some random thing that I've never heard. Obviously, yeah, 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 I'm not very yeah. versed in, in all of these things, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like 2 Chainz. 2 Chainz, um, he has, in the new album, he shouts out a bunch of H- HBCUs and... People are like, oh, how come you didn't shout this? And he's like, bro, there's like a hundred and something. HBO. Yeah. I'm not going to make a whole song, you know? So, yeah. So, and, and that's what my always. thing is. It's because you can never satisfy the mob, mm. right? Mm. They're always going to come for somebody and eventually going to come for themselves. Yeah. That's the risk of yeah. the mob. It's, that's so, true. Um, I, th- I think we all need to be better than cancer culture yeah. because you know, it's garbage. You know, um, Andrew posed a question. The reason I ask you this, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on this. So, you know, I was watching Brilliant Idiots and they said... They could have Hillsong could have used um, this as an opportunity to show people that you know God is a forgiving God, you know, or like the church is forgiving. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like you know for a very long time, 
you know, and again, this goes down to, like, you know, people are going to see what they want to mm-hmm. see at the end of the day. But I feel like the church gets a lot of negative, more negativity than it gets positive. Course, you get yeah. me? And it all has to do with the image, right? Mm-hmm. People uh, try to uphold this image, but then they do X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. right? Like if we don't all fuck up, right? So I, I completely get it. But what do you, what is your stance on that? So you say you feel like Hillsong should have fired him, but I guess the question begins like they fired him, but what would have been the repercussion if they would have kept them? What do you think would have been like the? Uh, let, let me let me tell you about something that I doubt you know, right? There okay. was uh, a couple of years ago, there was this this like leak or whatever mm-hmm. that uh, a gay couple was leading worship at Hillsong, right? Mm. And and I think it was the Hillsong Australia, another one here, and that thing caught on like a forest fire, uh, right? Gay like, couple as men and yeah, men and men. Men. so they were leading, and supposedly, right? The whole thing was that uh, the whole leadership knew. Mm-hmm. That they were together and that they were leading worship together. And so then it was like blowing like a forest fire. Like, how are you leading, letting them lead? How are you, you know, all of these things. Mm-hmm. And eventually it comes out to say, like, first of all, the moment we found out that they were taken out of leadership because, you know, we have a belief. We stand by this belief. We're right. not, you know, we're not going to go against what the Bible says. Yeah. Right. Uh, but at that point, they were giving all the heat from Christians. Yeah. They were like, oh, you guys are, are you not going against the Bible? Blah, blah, blah. And so now, if you were to keep Carl in leadership, the Christians are going to be the ones that give you the heat. Mm. Because you're supposed, and this is something the Bible tells you, right? It tells you, people shouldn't want to be leaders. Mm. <laughs> I know that's going to shock you. People shouldn't want to be leaders. Because a leader will be expected more of them, and they will be required more, and they will be, uh, you know, have to be held accountable before God. Yeah. Wow. Before so God. Before God. He doesn't say before man. He says before God. And, right? and this this isn't speaking to any... Is this speaking to a specific leader in the Bible? Or just no, no. It's general. talking leaders. Uh, so, gotcha. so Paul's writing about, you know, the requirements to be a leader. Yeah. And he's like, honestly, most people shouldn't be... He even says that young people, you guys shouldn't lead. Yeah. And as I get older, I agree with him more. Because hmm. I realize that I I, 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 I realize I'm a sucky leader. I'm, I'm too emotional. I'm too fluctuating. I'm too inconsistent. I'm too, I'm too dumb sometimes, yeah. you know? Why uh, do you feel like that? Because you realize, man... People need a leader that's gonna that's battle tested. Hmm, what you mean by that? Like someone who's gone through some stuff and and, and came out at the end. Like young people, we haven't gone through stuff, so mm-hmm. everything we do is I don't I don't say we should our voices shouldn't be heard. Yeah. But I'm saying we shouldn't be at the helm because we talk about theories and we talk about idealism, like how that thing should be. Right. And, and we don't know why it is the way it is because we haven't gone through it right mm-hmm. now. You know what I mean? You know, even even on that, right? So I've heard Kanye, right, say say this many times. Like he doesn't like to take advice from people older than him. He doesn't want to take advice from older people. Mm-hmm. He, he wants to take advice from the young people, though, because the young people are innovating. They're mm-hmm. coming up with new concepts. This, that, the third. I heard Dame say the yeah. same thing. What do you have to say to that then? No, no. Is, I, is I, it about? Because you did advice, say be heard. I, advice and leadership yeah. are not the same thing. Okay, so, talk see, about that. The, there's, there's, well, there's, there's you're a proverb, right. right? I, I there's I there's the a proverb yeah. where it says, uh, you know, in, in the counsel of many, there's wisdom. Mm. So I should bring all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not necessarily... But I shouldn't put him to be the manager. Okay. I, I guess, you know, I asked that question because it feels like if someone is usually coming to somebody else for, you know, like advice mm-hmm. and stuff like that, it's because they're usually higher up. You get me? Or like they look at that person somewhat as a mentor mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. Or you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, so but look, let's, let's say um, I come up to you and I go, hey, man, I, I need advice in regards to my squat because i know you're far better in leg strength conditioning and yeah. you tell me okay you gotta look out for this you are mentoring me in that area yeah but that doesn't you i mean you're automatically my my your leader my coach you gotcha. know what i mean yeah gotcha. because gotcha. you yes. have certain fortes uh mm-hmm. and, and the same can be for everything like yeah. you you call me like yo chris what does the bible say about this that doesn't make me your pastor yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah sure, sure. You know what I mean? Because okay. we recognize that some people are, yeah. have been walking in this road a little longer than us and may know a little bit of things that we don't know. Yeah. And so there's a distinction between asking for advice and making somebody your leader, right? Mm-hmm. So Carl Lenz she should, is, 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 wasn't kicked out of the church. Let's right. be clear. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I was going to go. That was my next question. Did he get kicked out of the church? No, let's be clear. Yeah. He is in the church. Even even the pastor said it. Like, you know, we want to work and restore, helping them restore of whatever course. they need from us. They can come with that. Yeah. Right? But he is not fit at this moment. And that hurts me because I look, I look right, up right. to that guy. And he, said, he said to himself, yeah, he's, he's not, not fit. He's not fit at this moment. Yeah. Notice how I said at this moment because I believe in a God who offers uh, reconciliation and restoration. So right. I think maybe in the future for sure he'll be back to where and better than whatever. Right. You know, but in this moment he's not fit to lead others because if you can't lead your own life, can you lead others? 
Right. That's the, ultimately yeah. what the mm-hmm. Bible points That's, to. Yeah. The Bible says if you cannot leave your life and your family, your ministry, mm-hmm. which is this right here, then you cannot lead out there. Right. It, it, I mean, it's the same concept of saying if you can't, you know, deal with your own problems, yeah. how can you possibly yeah. deal with the problems of others? Exactly. Or it's like, how can I, you know, and, and I know that the saying is those who can't do teach. That's right. a horrible saying. That's it, a horrible it thing. It is. Because it if is. I can't do it, I can't teach it. That's, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, and, you know, the, the, the reason why I was asking that, right, was because, you know, I, I read the articles, and this went on for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this wasn't like a fling no, or like no, something no, that just no, happened. No, no. This was like a very yeah, recurring yeah. thing. So, you know, I've, I've listened to, to call you, and you put me onto him. I've heard him on The Breakfast Club. I heard him on Brilliant Idiots. He's a very uh, fascinating guy, very mm-hmm. smart. Mm-hmm. Um and he and he absolutely like you know me hearing him you know like and listening I'm sorry me listening to him has definitely like like you know when I've have it's like yeah like this guy's God is definitely using you you get me like you can see mm-hmm. it but I you know, also like would like to talk about that that sense of is stop recording I also I also want to talk to that sense which is like you know the forgiving part at the end of the day you get me like yo I for one understand and you know. I came, I came from church myself, you know, um, so I understand, I say both sides, you get me, of, of people's griefs, meaning like, you know, being inside of it, mm-hmm. understanding, looking at what's happening and being on the outside of it, you get me? And at the end of the day, bro, I think that, you know, we put too much, like, we put too much pressure on pastors to like, and these leaders to like be this super perfect thing. And I understand too, you know, like you said, right? Cause at the end of the day, you know, you're a Christian, you're supposed to be like Christ and you're supposed to be following mm-hmm. Christ and, you know, you're representing that. Mm-hmm. So it is a lot of weight on your yeah, shoulders yeah, at the sure. end of the day. Yeah. But, you know, I completely, I, I completely um, get, but you know, not to stay on this topic so much, you know, just, just that. Um, what's the next topic? Cause now we got somebody in the back giving us topics. Yeah. Um, oh, all right, man. Ta- ta- go ahead. All I'm right, gonna give so you this one. This is how this conversation started. It's gonna be like a complete swift, like a complete, yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, I think Giselle was the one that said, you know. Do guys get raped? Yeah. Right? Right. It, it, it's so many stories about women, women. Yeah. What about the guys? And What's so going on? Somebody, yeah. uh, interestingly enough, sent me a video, which I just showed you, mm-hmm. uh, about AD kind of like, you know, horse playing with his teammates. He's yeah. a young dude at that point. So it's not like this AD is like whatever. Yeah. High school, yeah. young AD. Yeah. 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 So, um, and so that what I was saying is, is rape isn't just the full penetration of anything, mm-hmm. right? Right, right. It's this idea of, of any kind of harassment that goes beyond consent. Right or it goes beyond what what you're comfortable with, right. and I think guys often do get raped. They just don't acknowledge. They just don't know it. They just don't, <laughs> exactly. They don't acknowledge it because nobody ever told them that they could could be raped. Yeah. Right. That's you know what I never heard it that I never heard it be said that way. Like no seriously, you know we talk a lot about you know you have daughters, you have little sisters. Like hey, be careful when you're out at night. You know um, don't be you know out by yourself in the parking lot. You know we hear so much about women being careful. Mm -hmm. We never hear about men being like we don't even think it could happen to us. Like it's not even like a notion in our mind. I never heard it be said that way. And I'm gonna tell you why I know that that's be true, right? Like for example. You, you, I've, I've heard the story of like, oh, you know, like, let's be honest. If your teacher comes on to you like a girl, right? Yeah. She's beautiful. Comes on to a, a young dude. It's like, oh, you know, you got you to gotta make sure it happens. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, no, that's rape. Yeah. He, he's too young to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. But obviously the ego in us, and you love the word ego. I of think course. you talk about ego. Yes, a lot. All the time. <laughs> and so uh, the ego in us is like, no, no, no you got to get a pop. No, no, this is rape. And, and, and it's because... Yeah. We have double standards, but our double standards are dumb. You have a very aggressive yeah, culture, I yeah. think. You get me? I, th- I think us as men, we just have a very aggressive culture. And, and I think a lot, of, a lot of, uh, of our, the man culture is sex, right? It is, like, yeah. Like, yeah. And so we don't realize that sometimes you can be taken advantage of too. Yes. Okay, now now talk talk about this though. So what do you think? Because you said it's anything based on, you know, you're not comfortable with this at the third. Guys, especially, you know, I hear this with white guys all the time, but like guys back in the day, but you said like a uh, nut check and, you know, I'm slapping your ass yeah. or I'm squeezing your nipples or something, some shit yeah. like that, right? I was... I was the giver of many, many purple nurples <laughs> back in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, my guy. I done bruised up some of my homeboys. This guy included, right? Did I ever do that to you? I might do that to bro, you. You got big old hands, bro. Yeah, I might do that to hurts. you. Listen, man. We used to do this all the time. We used to play this game, I remember, in middle school, right? Well, we'll see each other in the halls. Or it didn't matter. Like, we'll be talking yeah. and random just purple nurple, and you'll <laughs> oh. hold it. You will hold it. Oh. And you will see how long your boy can, like, withstand yeah. the pain before he, like, gave up. And now that I think about it, I'm like, bro, that's a little, 
it's a little weird, bro. Yeah. It's like a little like, but it's something that we did as kids. It was like, yo, it's funny. Like, yeah. you know, everybody's doing it. People were nut checking people all the f- I, But I remember like for w- at one point I used to stand. Like, well, I used to be in my room at home, but I used to just cover my nuts. Because it's a paranoia. Yeah, yeah the, the paranoia is like that. Somebody's like, or if you knew of the guy, because it was always that one guy that always took it too far. Yeah. I was always trying to do the most. You were on that guy, you'd be on some, you yep. know? So are these things really considered rape? Are we just fucking around? Are we just playing? Like, well, what's, what's I know, the scale? I know, for, I know for, a, for a fact that now, 2020, there's a word for that, and that's called bullying, right? Oh, okay. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. true. Now we I talked heard, about yeah, it early yeah. in the episode. So not, not, that's, for, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, like, for example, um, I think it was you and Fatimo told me about 13 Reasons Why and, and the yeah. broomstick. Oh, man, that was bad, bro. Right, but that... That's rape. That, that's horse playing. Yeah. Nah, man, that's rape, bro. You know, but you know what I mean? Like, like, And I say air quotes... Because those those things they're being funny, that's true. Yeah, they didn't even know. Yeah, you at, know at what the, I mean. Yeah. Like, like yeah. that's why I say air quotes because it's like, oh, it's it's horseplay. It's not really horseplay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's what I mean. It's like, yo, you know, one thing is when we like agree that we're messing around, playing around, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And and even then, I'm not the type of person who likes to do that. I always right, tell people, right. yo, you put hands on me, I don't know how I'm gonna react. Yeah, you very like, respectful. Yeah, your I, space. I like to keep my hands to myself. I like yes, to keep yours. Yes. To you are, we're good, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. But but at least which is how like, men should conduct themselves, by the way. You get me all the horseplay. That almost never leads to anything uh, good. Somebody's so. gonna is gonna get mad, and then you end up in an argument, exactly. in a fight, or whatever. Exactly. But whatever. My point was to them, it was horseplay. Yeah. And, and so that's what I say is like. But realistically, this is full on rape. Yeah, full and, on rape. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, go ahead. Go no, no. So what I'm saying is, so I I think as men, I will say this all the time. Is I think words have power, and as men, we have been limited because we haven't given been given a, a full vocabulary. Yeah. Into like words like it's okay you yeah. can get raped you can get bullied you can get harassed you know or whatever you can cry you can right. feel you can say i don't like you know i there think we, we haven't go. been given those weapons and so we don't know how the voices of men can get raped you just don't know they can no you know i actually really like that you took it to that right you didn't just leave it at rape you took it to much more right because us as men i feel like we we have a very no, i'm good bro i'm good we, thank we you. have a, beautiful though. we have a very like 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 we're almost put in a box, right? As as to how we should conduct ourselves, mm-hmm. right? Just like you said, right? We're not told it's okay that we can cry. We're told that, oh, you gotta be strong. You get me? We're not told that it's okay to lean on mm-hmm. somebody. We're told that, no, you gotta be a protector. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? We're not told that, you know, our wife and us is 50 50. We're told that, no, you're a provider. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So we grew up with all these, especially me, you know, coming up, you know, my girl has taught me big lessons in that. You get me? That I, I never really thought I would mm-hmm. learn. You know what I mean? But it's true, like, we, you know, we grow up as men thinking that we're supposed to be all these things mm-hmm. that at the end of the day, we lose the fact that you know, we're humans too, just like women are humans too. You know what I mean? And we have emotions yep. just like women have yep. them. You know what I mean? And we go through shit just like everybody else in the world goes through shit, you know? But we're given this like, almost like this like mantle of like, yo, bro, this is this has got to be you. And mm-hmm. if you're not this, then guess what? You're going to be called a little bitch. You're going to be called yep. a pussy or you're going to be called you're not a man, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. And I'm glad that you went there because... I think that, you know, us, you know, us being in this position and us guys, you know, it's still very important for us to like tell the youth because maybe you're our age right now and you're like, whatever, whatever. But maybe somebody young listens to this and catches on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to cry. Like if you really have these emotions and these feelings and even if, you know, another thing too, don't let anybody else tell you how to feel. You know, I think that a lot of times like people will be like, well, if somebody died, it's okay for you to cry. But like, if this person says something to you, you better not cry. You're being a little bitch. Yeah, It's like, no, like, yo, if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. Nobody has the right Mm -hmm. to tell you how you should feel about mm. anything you know what you do have the right to do is express yourself especially in this country you know you got to be blessed that you're in this country you have the right to express yourself and i think yes. that as men and you're absolutely right we're not given the vocabulary you know what i'm saying we're not given the proper words you mm-hmm. know to really like express how we feel so we grow up with all these like fucked up yeah. things that we tend yeah. to do you know and, and even talking about that you know i was, I was watching this rapper and it's a little bit irrelevant but i never knew how like men really like men out here are like this. This is rapper um, who's not really that popping, but I guess he was popping because that person reposted him, and he was basically he was pretty much saying, "Man, look, bro, if I'm with you and I'm feeling like I'm not about to get no pussy, man, fuck it, I'm gonna rape your ass, bro. I'm gonna get it any way I yeah. want." Yeah, you know, talking all that shit, right? He's like, and he said it too, because at first I thought he was playing too. I was like, "Man, this guy's playing around." He's like, "And this ain't no joke, shit. This ain't no <laughs> he Instagram." Clarified it, he he like, clarified. He let everybody know this ain't no game. This ain't no Instagram funny shit. I'm being dead serious, and it, it made me think. I was like, "Wow." So, 
The only reason why we know about this is because clearly you fucking went on social media like a dumbass and said it, yeah, right? Yeah. It's something that you didn't have to say because if like, I'm pretty sure now whoever saw that every woman is probably is thinking, yeah, 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 trying to get out your way, zoom, anyways. Yeah. But that ha- that has me thinking. You know what? What me- what have men gone through? Because I know I know I've heard stories. I just never really like mm-hmm. seen like a big story, right? Of men out there being raped. So realistically, for men. Bro, I, s- I would say, just like, you know, we push women to do their research and we push women to be safe, I suggest men do the same shit. Because, you know, I can see how this conversation could also get flipped and be like, oh, look, look at, look at guys trying to take something else away from women nah, now. Nah, trying nah. to take something else away from girls. It's, it's not what we're trying to do. It's, I, again, this, you really did bring it to, like, you know, to, to, that de- to that degree where you said, and I didn't even think about it. But uh, Let like me just it. connect all we spoke today, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and I think you said something beautiful. Said, you know, men don't know how to lean on somebody and to to come echo the car lens thing and the leadership thing yeah. is when, especially when you're at the top is lonely mm. right so he was saying himself in his post and it's something we all have to be mindful of you know if somebody who's trying to lead people to jesus feels yeah. that way you know you got to be careful yeah, that he's, he's you find the the exits somewhere else mm. you find your solution somewhere else so you know the, a lot of the rape stories not just with men women end up in, in alcoholism end up in drug abuse why because they're finding the exit somewhere else they don't find a real avenue where they can channel this and, and find healing yeah right yeah. we just keep finding other ways to make us feel yeah. less and this is and this is all conducive to mental health yeah exactly at the end of the day. And, and so I, I think we need to be like you know we don't want to take the conversation away from women that's not what we do yeah. we just want to give voice to other sides of the story, right? right. Uh, yeah. and, and give people a chance to not be canceled because they think differently. Like, that's the whole idea is, is man, you know, somebody has the freedom to speak out, speak out for yourself and for others because there's stories out there. Like, I've heard stories. I, even Lecrae has songs about his own experiences, him being a little kid and being molested. Yeah. And, and it's like... And, and we take that as cool. Like, oh, you're an 8-year-old, 10-year-old, and you're fucking a yeah. 16-year-old. Damn. Like, you know, we look that as cool, but bro, that, that would fuck you Because even, even like that Drake lyric, right, where he's like, oh, I even got with my... Uh, but that's on some other, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he clarifies, like, that was a different thing. It, yeah, it was older. It, yes, we're, we were both older. You yeah, know, yeah. like, there's a there's a very big difference in that and we need to be mindful that you know no, there there are gray lines here there, there's yeah. not like oh guys don't get raped yeah no guys. it's it's definitely very clean and cut for sure um i'm actually bro i'm really glad that I even we left that for last because you went into it a very like in a different angle you get what i'm saying so one more topic we got another one before we wrap this up oh okay uh, is credit important in 2020 I like this question. You want to talk about that or what? Uh, you, bro, you're the... I, I'm only, yeah. I, I let you talk the whole time because yeah. you're the financial master here. So, I'm my, not no financial master, my, but... My I only thing is, this. if you don't have cash, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's literally what I was going to say. So, this is the thing, man. And, and I'm, I'm going to make this quick. I'm not no financial analyst. I, I don't think you should take my advice. You get me? If you... If what I said today don't interest you... But you told me to you, invest in that yeah, specific but stock. So yeah, but don't, don't take it, though. Go and do your own research. I was about to say, take take what I'm about to say, right, and do your own research. I am not no player player. I'm not no Grant Cardone. I ain't driving Rolls Royces, so I ain't the guy that you listen to about money all the time, right? But I will say this, though. If you're a young person right now, you're in high school, maybe you don't even have a credit card, be careful and tread very, very softly, all right? Because this is what happens, right? Credit card, my first credit card, this is what they told me, right? They get, first, I did it online, so I didn't have to talk to nobody. Easy. I get, I get, I get it in the mail, and they tell you know they write you a little yeah. letter. Oh, you got fifty percent. Uh, no, I'm sorry, fifteen months of of no, zero APR. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you're not paying uh, no interest at all, right? So you're thinking, okay, so it's like regular money. It's like a debit card. You yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just swiping, swiping, swiping. What ends up happening is that you end up swiping, swiping, swiping. Even if you pay your thing monthly, you pay it off. However, the, however you want to roll with it. Bro, it's going to come a time where if you get too comfortable with that, mm-hmm. and this is what happens. We get too comfortable with money, and we're not intentional with money, and this is a problem, right? The, I'm not going to say that credit is good or bad. That's not the conversation I want to have today. The conversation I want to have today, though, is about money, meaning mm. learn to manage money. You get what I'm saying? If you know what you're doing, then that's all you need to know. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's it. If you can say, I know what I'm doing because this, this, that, and the third, meaning that you calculated it, it's math, it's proven, it's a plan, then go for it because that's how you should handle money to mm-hmm. begin with. What happens with credit cards is that we get it and we start, we usually buy shit that we wouldn't buy with our cash mm-hmm. at the moment. I mean, you might go rent a car with a credit card because you need to, right? But many times you might be like, huh, you know what? I don't have the money now, but I'm going to get a next check. So I'll buy it now and I'll pay for a next check. Mm-hmm. You're fucking up. Wait for your ass to get that next check and go buy that shit cash. You get me? Do not, don't start, you know, going too trigger happy because yeah. that's what happens. You know, look, I was young once. I was dumb. I'm still dumb. But, but, 
swiping here, there. I'm at a club here. I'm at a bar here. I'm at a store here. You know, and next thing you know, damn, you got some, you know, you got some debt with you. And, bro, listen, all this money that you're putting into it, into, like, having this consumer debt mm -hmm. isn't really uh, helping you build something, you know, that's going to be of mm -hmm. long last, right? And most of the time when you buy these things, they're not assets. They're stuff mm -hmm. that just has either no value. Unless, look, unless you're buying stuff that has value, you know, you're one of those guys that, like, likes to go buy sneakers and go resell them. Fine, you get me? But at the end of the day, just the last thing I want to say is just learn to manage your money. You get me? Learn to budget because that's going to be very, very important. You know, whether you do that or on pay, which for, first, I, I suggest every, not on paper, but, like, you know, on your computer, Excel, it, but budget. Do not just like, oh, I get this check in my account. I pay all my bills and I have this left. No, like, yo, allocate your money to where it needs to go. This mm -hmm. percentage is going to go to here. That percentage mm -hmm. is going to go to here. This, that, the third, because... The more intentional you become with money, because remember, mm -hmm. the thing that we don't learn in the hood, in the streets, the things that our parents don't teach us, that money is a tool. The problem with us is that we don't see money as a tool. Mm -hmm. We see money as like the way to get yeah, out, yeah. the way to get things, the way to, you know, this and the third, which I get it. Because at the end of the day, money's used for one thing, to get things done. You get what I'm saying? But think of money as a tool. And all you're doing is you're getting more money and you're getting more of this tool. And when you have the complete tool, you can go ahead and use it mm -hmm. to go ahead and get you more tools yeah. you get me more assets in and that's how you're going to begin to live a very very fruitful and much better life you know um this is biblical the borrower is debt is a slave to the lender right that's how it yeah. goes right i don't know if i messed that up yeah, there's another good. one that's good. good is there another yeah. one i know there's another one i just don't know it in the bible oh um for example the other one about the the investing side right yeah. that, that that's the number one thing i want to talk yeah. about so Right, the, the parable in the Bible is basically this guy gives three guys some money, right? Two guys go make stuff happen with that money. Another guy decides to go save that money, right? When the king comes back and says, yo, well, the guy comes back and says, yo, bro, where my money at? He's like, yo, two guys are like, yo, bro, I made stuff happen for you. The other guy's like, look, bro, here's your money back. And dude was like, yo, bro, you ain't doing nothing with this money, though. I've been gone for X, Y, and Z. You could have done something. And that's what happens with us. We get this money. We put it in our savings account. We keep save, 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 save for no reason, whatever. Because, you know, I understand, bro. I understand what it means being poor. So you seeing that money in your account makes you feel safe. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel better. We're so scared to go to zero. But I'm here to tell you, don't be afraid to go to zero. You get me? You got to take risk. And like I said, when okay. you learn Preach to manage future. your I money, see you. I see when you. you learn to manage your money and you learn that first, then you're able to take risk. You get me? Because you're assessing and you're, you know, carefully mm -hmm. calculating what you're going to do. And that's what's important. You get me? Especially for us. You know, if you're someone who, you know, for example, I came from immigrant parents. We all came here from Im immigrant parents who not from this country. And wherever we're at today, you know, whatever level they brought us in, we just continue going. You get me? They passed us. What's that little, the, the relay, torch. the little baton, the oh. torch. And we're going to keep running. You get me? And when we have kids or whoever you're going to give your money to, that's who's going to have to carry that on. But those lessons you need to give to them. Mm -hmm. You get me? Especially to the youth right now. You know, I talked to my little sister a lot about this because it's, imp it's something that my parents never talked to me about. They don't even, probably, probably don't even know now. So... It, that, that, that's all I want to say. So, again, take this and go do your own research. Do not be like, oh, George told me to do it. Nah, listen, go and do your own research. But I do want to put you on game because that's going to be very, very important. You manage your money. Every, anything that comes out of that, bro, you're going to be good. Uh, is there anything else? No, that was beautiful, bro. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy with this episode. I think we got some <laughs> stuff. We got some stuff done. All right, y'all. So, once again, man, we thank you guys for watching. Um, again, th hopefully this is like uh, Friday. And we're gonna we're gonna record tomorrow. Probably kick it off. I don't know. When should we kick the the other episode off? What do you think? If we go Fridays? No, it should be like Friday, Monday. Monday. You, you wanna give you no, enough time? Enough to time. Yeah, I, I think so too. So actually, oh, you know what? Maybe Wednesday. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say middle Tuesday of the week, too, yeah. right? Or Tuesday? Yeah, that's probably better. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to do you Tuesday. Get Taco Tuesday. Yes, exactly. You get Taco. There we go. I like that. You're gonna get dumbass Tuesday. I mean Taco <laughs> Tuesday, and you'll get I'm down on Friday, and that's how we're in the road. We appreciate you guys for watching. Me and Chris. This is I'm down. Till next time. Peace. <laughs>